Hello everyone and welcome back to RP2000 Testing in Kerbal Space Program 1.8.1. This video continues directly after the previous one where I encountered a game crash inducing the coupler bug. I did want to mention my position on tooling which is a popular feature of RP1 up front here. I'm not going to attempt to include it in RP2000 because I think if you want to focus on using a limited set of rockets you can be free to roleplay that without some mechanism that could constrain others from being more experimental. So you can do that but others should be free to make rockets as they please. RP2000 is meant for people who might not be familiar with real life rockets and therefore might not foresee what kind of rocket they will need so it needs to be more open I think. And fundamentally, there's a space simulator that has encouraged great creativity, and I don't want to turn it into an economic simulator that stifles it. So that's my general policy on that. There is also practical issues with implementing the tooling system. So, but I'll leave it at that. I think that's hopefully understandable. So with that, here is the original audio from the live stream of RP2000 testing. We don't have a whole lot of spare Delta V just to get into the first orbit. As it turns out. Okay, so um, let's see about a quote unquote hot staging if that's possible. No, you can shut down. I think the heat tolerance on the decoupler is too much. It. It crashed the game again. Gosh darn it. This decoupler here. Well, maybe we should just keep it simple. I don't know if that'll help or not, but let's just make it like that. Like, I won't even resize it. I didn't feel like we were gonna make it to the second... the second orbit. I think Maybe instead of this, we'll go with a whole bunch of the small one, which is more efficient. But then the RCS. But we didn't need the RCS, it turns out, so that's fine. Well, it's a service module tank. 12 minutes. Okay, we'll build one of these, and hopefully it'll decouple properly, but who knows. Uh, it can be a simple algorithm and still be overcomplicating. Oh no, why does this not have the antennas? Gosh darn it. I guess I didn't save that version. Well, there's no RCS, so I guess we can just leave them sticking like that. Okay, well. Comes, but we have to line up. Seems good enough to me. Okay, throttle up. SAS on. Ignition. Launch. Maybe more than that. Uh, no, less than that. No, I was thinking the wrong way around last time. We want 302. Hmm, are we too shallow? Seems alright. Okay. Well, let's check inclination. Seven degrees. That's not as bad as before. Should be able to do the fairings. Yep. Okay, that'll be good enough. Well, we're gonna have some high tension decouplings ahead of us. Let's extend the... Oh, not really what I wanted to do. Mm. Science later. I'm worried about losing electric charge with the science, so we'll just hold off on that for now. Okay, next H. That plume is somewhere else. <laughs> I swear the plume changes. Do we have uh, the wrong engine somewhere? <laughs> no, that's that's off. Anyway, got all the plume. Check comms. 
That should be alright. I know I'm falling, but we're gonna make orbit and we want to get to uh, really, really high orbit anyway, so... Um, yeah, we, uh, it's not gonna make a difference. Oh, uh, the inclination is much more of a problem, though. In fact, I uh, don't see a whole lot of reason not to keep burning. Um, just comms. We've got comms through uh, Vandenberg and everything. Until that comms gets stretched out, I don't think I need to shut down. Okay, I don't want to take any chances on comms, so we'll wait. Uh, I guess we still had another comm location there. Hmm, well, let's see. Okay, that should be good. Beijing, even! Didn't know they would give us comm assistance. Let's go with cheats on that, too! <laughs> Getting calm assistance from random peoples all over the place. I think it'll be more convenient to just burn at apoapsis from here. And then uh, at the next apoapsis after that. Let's see if the coupling works though. Okay, will staging work this time? Carried an extra heavy decoupler here. Whoa! That was a fierce decoupler. <laughs> that thing might have gotten deorbited. Uh, no, apparently not. At least I don't think so. Let's see. Do we have... Doesn't seem like it. Okay. Probably want it a little bit lower than that, but hopefully they're not gonna be too picky. And then we have to do a 45 degree turn somehow. Okay, they accepted that. Now we can't do maneuver nodes right. <laughs> of course we can't. So, we're going this way. And we want to go south. Probably a little bit retrograde too, because we're going to be putting more energy into the orbit. Let's see if it's enough. I'm trying to remember if there was a divide by two or not <laughs> in the equation for this. It might not be enough. Close, though. <laughs> really close. Oh, we're deviating again. But not quite. Alright, but we can still do science now. It's safe. We still got a reaction wheel. We can point at the sun and everything. So, sun... down. And this will continue to serve as a relay satellite. But, alright. Uh, let's transmit. That one took a bunch. Transmit. And transmit. Uh, okay, we need to tell it to allow partial, I suppose. Maybe if we start with a full tank of charge, you'll be fine. Oh. What happened to the one that... Oh, it's all fuzzy. I need to work on the KS3P thing when it comes to the CubeSats. No, it's still not. Uh, okay, there was enough. Alright, we got that. Alright, so we got some science, we got one of the two contracts done. 
not thrilled with having to the other one, but maybe it's sort of like a reverse satellite constellation for communications. They're all going backwards, but you know, maybe it's not completely useless. I, uh, as high as they are, they're not going to be very fast, so they're not going to get out of position that quickly. The only RP2000 contracts are... Well, I guess there ought to be flyby contracts. Why can't I do that? Oh, we have to do flyby Mars first. How do we get a flyby Mars then? <laughs> I wonder how we do the early ones. Hey, science data from space around Earth. Well, that'd be easy. Well, we, well whether they want one... Want to fly by or not? We can do a specific orbit around the moon. It's interesting. Or this is a pretty high pull orbit around the Earth, though. Let's go for the moon one. Just the antenna can generate power. Nothing fancy. Inclinations gonna be retrograde again, but that's pretty normal for the moon anyway. Now, of course, as usual. We haven't done the tracking station. Uh, we've got 295,000. I wonder how much that is. So with the RP2000 configuration for the launch pad and all, we got a 40 ton limit there. 40 tons. We can upgrade to 150. Uh, it'll cost 150,000. That's not that bad. We could get patch conics for 120,000. And then planning is only 60,000. That's pretty cheap. Uh, I thought hard would be harder. Hmm. The VAB is a little bit more expensive. But yeah, I guess it'll be worth it to get both of those started. By the time we actually launch the rocket, I don't know if we'll have patch conics or not. Hmm. We've got one point available. Let's just put it in the VAB. I thought... The building up... Oh, they, they, they are. Yeah, they'll take a long time. So even... We'll, by the time we finish building the rocket, it's not going to be ready. The CubeSats makes... The CubeSats make everything cheaty, though. I don't see any compelling reason to change this. We could make it smaller, but... Let's not mess with it. Bravo 2 is a good thing. If Electron can send something to Venus, we can send this to the moon. Okay. Uh, two of them? Uh, no, actually that's fine. We probably do want two of them. Because we still have that other orbit the other contract to deal with. We have Unlocked Engineering 101 here. We've got some extra science, so we should queue that up. General Rocketry. Probably. But then, other solar panels that aren't on CubeSats might be nice. <laughs> uh, they're all the way, all the way down here, the other solar panels. So maybe survivability. Survivability also, we want the heat shield. So yeah, we'll probably... I don't know if we're going to get a contract that asks us to bring something back, but that's probably important. Okay, well, we get to line up with the moon if we can target it, but we probably can't target it right. No, we can't. Okay, so then we're going to have to do the haphazard thing of trying to figure out when to launch. I think that should be good. Well, this is going to be a nighttime launch. That's just how it's going to be. SAS on, throttle is up, ignition. And launch. Staging is weird again. This is currently the best rocket in the world. It is December 27th, 2000. Though I guess before they come up with five-dimensional printers, they would start out by having five-dimensional printers that print three or four-dimensional materials. 
just like we had a three-dimensional printer that printed two-dimensionally, right, uh, on paper. So maybe there are five-dimensional 3D printers. Okay, fairings. It's all dark. To a normal orbit, this is the right payload for this. It's horrible other orbits that the contracts are making us do. Okay, uh, let's get the solar panels and comms out just here. I need to maybe tone down this reaction wheel. Though I set it to a level that's commensurate to the ones in realism overhaul. Uh, it's still too powerful. Shouldn't be able to turn an entire stage like that. I think this stays suborbital. <laughs> in general, I like the whole little engines being really loud and obnoxious thing. And this stage has just the right amount to transfer to the moon after making orbit. Good enough for me. Okay, well, we'll have to just guesstimate. We can't plot it. Fortunately, our final stage has a lot of delta V to fix things. Which we will no doubt need. That seems like it's gonna stretch a bit. We don't have a really good comm station over here. But I think we can just run it to depletion, so... Gosh, it is a long stage. <laughs> All 500 newtons of it. We're a little bit late. Okay, it is a bit dodgy. Let me see how the comms are. Oh, we've got the whole Australia thing. Alright. Alright. Fall down. Separation. I don't understand why that's so vigorous. Um, why is that so vigorous? That that knocked us all out of proportion. It didn't seem to do anything when on our other mission, actually. But that decoupler is weird. We're gonna have to overburn a little bit to give the moon time to catch up to us. I don't know if that's enough because I can't see our period. Let's see. Again, we have a lot of delta V at least. Oh, up, 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 that electric charge. Uh, let's just go sun down, execute. Eh, uh, the moon's gotta slip by, isn't it? Uh... Ah... Uh, I'm just gonna manually match the moon's orbit kind of thing. Not efficient, but again, we have propellant. But we do have to, when we get to the moon, get into a particular orbit. I, I don't think this is going very well. <laughs> We're not gonna be in. We're just gonna have to wing it. Oh, we lost power. Uh oh. Hopefully, it's in an orientation where we can. I should uh, double check that. Oh no. Is it never gonna get power again? Well, eventually, I think. We'll, we'll, we'll wait. We'll wait. I don't know if we're gonna... Oh, 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 we, we got slingshot. Oh, no! And we're pulverized. Wow, that was quick. All right. All right. All right. I've had enough for today. I've got a list of things that I need to fix again. 
I think I'll just call it there.